And so we talked a little about statistical reasoning, um, averages or means, median and mode. And for this video, and for this lesson, we're going to talk a little more about statistics in terms of samples and populations and how you do scientific or field-based research using statistics. And we're going to be looking at the Venus flytrap from the Stanley Rader Garden in Wilmington, North Carolina. And on our next lesson, uh, we'll be looking at the Venus flytrap frolic, which is when um, staff members and people involved in the Stanley Raider Park are going to actually go out and record some of the fly traps and some of their behavior and let you see it as part of a live broadcast. It'll be on Facebook and Instagram so I'll be recording what I see and then playing back the parts that I think you all will be interested in. So the key terms here are population sample, random sample, and variability. Population is a group of organisms from a species that lives in a particular area. A sample is a smaller group of things from a population of that same thing that represents the population. A random sample is a sample from the population that's selected by chance. And variability means how much of something or how much change is seen in a population when you take more than one sample. So analyzing samples from different times is one way you can determine how the population changes. For example, if you look at certain areas where Venus flytraps have been over a course of a few years, that would tell you if there are fewer plants, more plants, or about the same number. And it would also tell you or give you a statistical, statistically reasonable idea if that population is increasing or decreasing and if it's healthy or not. So to do a basic um, experiment in statistics, we're going to look at some actual pictures which are in this case going to represent samples taken from the Stanley Rader Park um, over several years. Most of them are pictures I took and a couple are pictures that someone else took. So this first one is from 2016 and this is July of 2016 and this is a sample of several different organisms or several different individuals and you can count the number here and see that there are probably six different individuals. It looks like six individuals in this example. When we go back and take a, a specific shot of that actual end of one of the individuals in that sample, you see this picture. Um, so it's also from July of 2016 and it shows a pretty colorful example of a fly trap. This one comes from 2017 and this was taken in August 2017. So there's not a sample of, you know, there's not a sample where there's several individuals here. This is just one individual. We'll move to 2018 and you can see that this is a sample 
when it was pretty wet and there are six or seven different individuals in this example or this sample. So see if you can identify all of the individuals in this example. And then you'll see this is the individual from 2018 that I took. Uh, and this is a very healthy plant. You can see how bright the leaves are. Um, almost looks like a watermelon. I mean insects. And the prey that this flytrap feeds on is just drawn to these particular colors. This is a sample from 2019, and the arrows drawn are identifying individuals. So in this one, you can also see that there are six different individuals that are obvious in this sample. So these samples are not exactly completely random, but they're meant to be random, so it's difficult to identify all the individuals in every sample. And you'll see this is the example or the individual from 2019. This is also a very colorful flytrap. It looks pretty healthy, um, but it's a little drier around it in this, this case and the stem is not quite as green and sturdy as some of the earlier examples. So from that we can get some statistical questions. Um, if you look from July of 2016 through 2019 and compare the samples and the individual individuals in each sample, you um, you can make some estimations, some reasonable statistical estimations of the population in this sample. Is it getting bigger, smaller, and the health of it? So we saw the colors and we saw how healthy the stems were. So I've got a table here that summarizes that data. And it gives you the number of individuals in each sample. And then it gives you an estimation, more of a qualitative observation about the health of those samples. So how do you think the population changed from 2016 to 2019? Do you see a large variation or a lot of difference between the individual samples and the health? Or are they pretty close together, meaning there's only one or two individual differences? The 2020 numbers are not filled in yet because we will see from the frolic um, on August, uh, I'm sorry, on April the 30th, that's Thursday morning at, starting at 11, we'll be able to see a live example of how samples change and how the individuals have changed. So when you look at the samples, they're about the same number of individuals, and each one is not a big difference in how colorful plants look or how the vegetation looks around them and it's not a huge difference in the stem sizes. The variability is therefore low. You can make several inferences from these samples taken of the Venus flytraps in Stanley Rader Garden. Mainly that so far they have not changed quite a bit since 2016. So you can also make a prediction about what's going to happen in 2020. So I'm going to predict that when we see the observations made on Thursday, um, April the 30th at the frolic, you will probably see that there's very, they are very similar. The samples should be very similar and the individuals should be very similar. So it should be an exciting um, time and it would either confirm or deny or uh, 
discredit what I have predicted. And here are some of the resources that you can use uh, to learn more about where I got the information, including this last one, which is a link to more information about the frolic.